What is the best B camera for Sony A7S III? Actually, it's the new A7S III, but still it's very expensive and we have only two kidneys and one is already sold for buying the new A7S III. So guys, today we'll find out which camera is the best B cam for Sony A7S III for under a thousand bucks. Let's go! What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin and you're watching No Limits On, the channel about the privilege of being a freelancer, tips and pieces of advice about motivation, personal growth, gear reviews and many more. Welcome to the channel. Why do you even need a second camera? There are three reasons. First, it's, uh, you know, being responsible. A very responsible videographer always has two cameras in his backpack because we never know, one might fail at any time. It can be a crash or some software issue or the shutter is blocked or something. You'll always need to bring two cameras with you. I'm bringing two cameras with me for more than five years now. I've been bringing, if I'm being grammatically correct, I'm sorry, I'm Russian, I'm not always remembering the grammar, but still, you need to have two cameras at least. And hopefully these are the cameras from one manufacturer and with the same bayonet or lens mount. So this is the Sony E-mount for Sony A7S III. And actually you'll need a second camera to take the second angle. For instance, uh, you're having an interview and you need two angles or maybe even three angles and now you have this possibility. Or you can put it on a gimbal and use one camera on a monopod for you know normal shots and uh, close-ups and the second camera with your gimbal and take some wide-angle shots without flipping, flopping the camera around. And you'll have two cameras and it's extremely easy and really comfortable to work with in post. Okay, if you're looking for the second camera, here are the specs of this camera for the Sony a7 III or any actually Sony camera or not even a Sony camera. So this camera needs to have a good 4K image because nowadays a good 4K is kind of a standard quality, you know? Then it has to be reliable, so no overheating issues. This is my Sony A6300 and it overheats in 4K mode. Actually, it uh, records up to 4K30 for about 18, maybe 25 minutes and then it overheats. So that is why I'm either using the 1080 mode if I need to kind of uh, record the long interview, for instance, and I use the telephoto lens on this one because in telephoto mode, it's, uh, you know, not that visible that the Full HD quality is not on par and it's kind of soft, but still the 4K image, if you're using it on a gimbal or for some, you know, short shots, exactly what I need from the small compact and very lightweight camera. So the next thing you'll need to look at for the second camera is its size and it's very compact actually. It's small, it almost doesn't take any space in my backpack and it's very light, I barely feel it in my backpack at all. So here are the things, lightweight, compact, good 4K, the same mount as your main camera and probably the same batteries or you'll need to have two small batteries like here. Uh, 50 something NPFW 50s or a power bank. So a power bank is always with me, kind of. So I don't need a separate set of batteries, just two batteries, just in case, and a power bank. And I'm really satisfied with it. So what options do we have? I've been using this set of cameras for more than five years now, the Sony a7S Mark II and the Sony a6300 as my second camera, as a B camera. This was all the time on the gimbal with my 10 to 18 lens f4 and this was on my monopod or handheld almost every time with my 35mm Luxia or 85mm batteries, so for more close-up shots. And those cameras match pretty perfectly. They all have the same batteries, they all have uh, the same, you know, screens kind of, the same picture quality in 4K. This is a little bit better in 4K because it down samples from 6K. Also, they have 1080, pretty, nah. This one has much better 1080 actually. This 1080 is rubbish. Also, they have 4K 30 in 8 bit 420 and the same picture profiles and the same, you know, settings, and you can set them pretty equally and simply hit record on both of them and then match in post 
flawlessly. But now I'm switching to a Sony a7S III and I'm obviously going to sell one of those. And here is the dilemma. I don't even know which one is the best second camera from a Sony a7S III. In one way, this is a better camera because it's smaller and almost all the time I'm going to be using one single Sony a7S III and this will be just in case camera or the second angle in 4K for some, you know, small shots, not really the interviews because it overheats. But then I understand that this is the APS-C body and all of my lenses are now for full frame cameras, almost all of them, except for the Sigma 18 to 35, which is shooting me right now with my Sony FS7. Also, this camera has no headphone jack and it's not for audio monitoring, but I uh, still have on my Atomos Ninja 5 the headphone jack. Maybe it's not an issue for me, but I'm really kind of, you know, between two roads, or at the crossroads, because this is heavier, but it's a full frame camera and it's still working, it's just great, but it's not for the gimbal because the autofocus is not there and I'm kind of struggling around. I found out which one is staying with me because this one is for about maybe 400, maybe 450 bucks secondhand and this is a little bit less than a thousand bucks maybe a little bit more than a thousand bucks if you get lucky so i'm done really now i'll tell you later guys so what options do we have actually why am i putting this away we have the sony a6300 you can buy this used for about mm, maybe 400 dollars it still has the great 4k it doesn't have actually an audio jack but the mic for mic jack is inside so it's pretty working, it's good. Also, it has really great 4K, but extremely bad rolling shutter, but really great 4K. So in some cases, it's pretty nice. I shot some videos completely on this camera, this APS-C camera, and they were just as good as they were on this camera. So if this camera is in right hands, it can produce great, great images. This does not feature the IBIS, so you'll have to use it on a gimbal or with a, you know, model pod or something. And also it has shitty small batteries, but actually when you buy a camera under a thousand dollars, you'll always get the small shitty battery. That's just the way it is. I do recommend this camera, but you will need to know it's, uh, you know, quirks, the overheating issue, the soft 1080p, the absence of IBIS, so you'll need to find a way around to work with those features. The second camera is actually the Sony a7S II. You can buy this used in a pretty good condition with a shutter less than 9,000 clicks or shutter, what, actions? <laughs> I don't know how it's called in English. Uh, it's a full frame camera, actually, it's great. It's a great camera. I've been using it for more than five years and I have no complaints about it. It also has some quirks such as the bad autofocus, but it has great low light. You can pull some color from this camera if you know how to. And also it features many, many things that are just great. IBIS is in there, great 4K, no overheating, great 1080p, even in 120p. So it's a good choice, actually. It's a little bit on the heavy side comparing to the smaller cameras, but still it's a great choice and I'm really, really not sure yet which camera is staying for me as a second one, as a B camera, and which is kind of leaving me and I'm saying goodbye to. The next option for you guys is the Sony a6400. It features the different screen, the different monitor. It flips up like this. Also, it features the touchscreen functionality so you can tap to focus it's a pretty handy feature also it has no recording limits and no overheating so you can set the high temperature mode and it will never overheat on you so it's a much better choice still the shitty small batteries like here but this camera is much much better so you can do some selfie stuff vlogging stuff uh, two camera setups uh, without any monitors in terms of external monitors so you can just simply use two cameras sony a7s3 and the uh, sony a6400 and just make kind of a two camera setup for yourself which is great it's still 4k 30 420 8-bit 
Yes, it's just the way it is, the same sensor actually and the same picture quality as the 6300 but it's on the pricier side, so you have to decide whether you're ready to pay more for 6400 or less for 6300, but kind of work around it. And the next camera is Sony a6500. It features the in-body image stabilization and the touchscreen functionality. No flip up screen, of course, still record limits, by the way. So it's kind of a better A6300, but actually I'd prefer A6400. You can still buy a used 6500 for about a thousand dollars. And for the new A6400, you'll find some deals on the new one for a thousand bucks. So it's a pretty, pretty great deal actually. And one more interesting camera, which you can buy by the way for a thousand bucks is the new iPhone uh, 12 Pro. Max. No, the Max is 1100, but still, okay, let's imagine that you can buy. Why is it even an option, you'd ask? My friend, um, maybe half a year ago, sold his Sony a6300 and all the lenses and bought iPhone 11 Pro not the max one just the 11 pro with three cameras and actually he's still having some you know client work and he got paid for those videos with his iphone and for from time to time he just rents some gear some cameras lenses and all that stuff and he found it uh, more interesting and more kind of native way for him so i'll tell you one more story uh, actually, about so a year and a half ago, I had a shootout during the day of my city and it was a freaking hot day. The sun was uh, pretty direct into my Sony a7S II and I was kind of carrying it around all day and it was extremely hot because the direct sun is kind of melting my camera. And I had a shoot where the, you know, the team was dancing and I had to shoot the entire dance of the team, the entire kind of performance. And actually, as I started this, I found that the camera overheated in 30 to 40 seconds after I pressed record button. So I just took my iPhone 8 and I came closer to the stage. I could come closer actually. And I shot the rest of it with my iPhone 8. Just as soon as I saw the overheating warning, I just pulled my iPhone and I started shooting. And then I matched those two videos, edited, color graded, and actually it went all right. I didn't get paid because I have decided not to take money from those clients, but still they were satisfied and they kind of put out the video and it worked out. So if you're having an opportunity to always bring with you a camera with three different lenses, a 13 millimeter ultra wide, 26 millimeter normal and 65 millimeter lens also in 10 bit Dolby Vision I'm not sure what Dolby Vision is but still it is an option and 10 bit in the cell phone in 4k 60 is just you know I'm mind blowing so guys it's up to you to choose the second camera but I do recommend using a second camera especially with the same mount or maybe an iPhone, who knows? Maybe you can use your iPhone, by the way, as the, as the second or as the third camera during the interview. And one of the angles can be shot on iPhone. Maybe not, maybe yes, but I'd rather try than not to. And we're moving on to the quote of the episode. Modesty is a helper of peace. Yeah, your camera can be modest, your B camera can be modest, and it can have some not that incredible features, but still it makes you much more confident shooter when you do know that in any case you have a backup camera or a second angle. So just try using two cameras at once. There is no going back from it, guys. And so the question of the episode, what the main, the A camera do you use and what second or B camera do you use? Please share your combinations in the comment section below. And if you do like my videos, guys, please hit the like button, bang, or button. I always say bottle because once I said this and, and I really enjoyed it. And uh, the notifications bell and the like button again. <laughs> and uh, please guys, comment something, leave a comment, please. It's really helping with the algorithms of YouTube. I do appreciate it, guys, a lot. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye. Take care.